How to play finger style or finger picking guitar lesson one. People who are subscribed to this channel might recognize that this is the beginning of a course that's already completed and that's the book one finger style course. However, I'm uploading the first few lessons again because they need some small corrections, the links updating and I also want to put in chapters. And if you're new to the channel, there's a link down below to the playlist of the entire course, which you can go through lesson by lesson. This course is a beginner's course in fingerstyle guitar. But you need to have some knowledge already of how to play the guitar. And if you are an absolute beginner on the guitar, don't worry, I've put another link down below in the description to an absolute beginner's short course that will get you up to the level you need to be at before attempting this course. And I just have to put a brief warning here in that all the guitar courses are designed specifically to teach you correctly and they are progressive. So they slowly get harder and harder. So if you want to learn to play the guitar properly, don't skip any of the lessons. Just go through them. Even if you think you know the lesson or you find it patronising, just go through it. It won't take you long, just to make sure you've not missed anything. Right, let's get started. The basics, your hands and your fingers. When learning how to play chords and scales on the guitar, you will have learned the names of the fingers on the fingering hand which are numbers 1, 2, 3 and 4. However, the fingers on the picking hand are letters P, I, M, A and L. And these stand for primary, index, middle, annular and very rarely used but still there, the little finger. And you'll see these letters above the score as either a pattern at the beginning of a tune or above the score above the notes which are being played where it isn't completely obvious which fingers you should use. And you might find it difficult to remember the complete name of each of these fingers. However, it isn't really necessary as long as you can remember the letters. But here's some tips that might help. The primary, which is the thumb, is the biggest and the first of the fingers. The index is the one you use to actually look down indexes. The middle is dead center on your hand. And as for the annular finger, annual is cycle or ring, and this is the ring finger. And finally, the little finger is pretty obvious, I think. I should also point out that this naming system isn't just adopted by myself, it's actually a standard naming system that's been used for many years. So you'll come across it in a lot of finger style music. So it's well worth learning the names of the fingers. Right, let's get into it. Exercise one. In this first exercise, we'll just be using two fingers on two separate strings and we won't be holding down any fingering notes. And the first note we'll play will be the bottom E string with the primary finger plucking downwards. Then you'll pluck upwards with the index finger on the B string. So it sounds like this. Now, when playing these exercises, I'll use a metronome and I'll have a two bar introduction before I start playing anything. That's eight beats. And this gives you time to get ready and play along with me if you want to. Here's that exercise with a metronome and a two bar introduction. You 
you'll notice that I'm just repeating the exercise once. However, when you're practicing it, there's nothing stopping you from just keep on going until you've got it nice and fluent and you feel happy with it. Here it is again, repeated once and with a two bar introduction so you can try and play along if you want to. I'm playing these exercises at a speed of 90 beats per minute, which I think is a good middle ground. However, if you want to play faster, or if you need to play slower, you can pause the video and practice it for a bit until you're happy with the speed. Obviously, eventually your aim is to get it faster. And bearing this in mind, I've put some metronome beats at various speeds at the end of this video. You can find those using the chapter markers. Right, let's hear exercise one one last time with a two bar introduction. Exercise 2. In this exercise, we're introducing another finger, and that's the middle finger. So, for this exercise, we're playing the primary finger downward again, then the index finger up, and finally the middle finger on the top E string upwards. Here's what that looks like. And here it is with a two bar introduction, so you can try and play along with it. And here that is again, one last time with a two bar introduction, in case you want to try and play along with it. Hopefully you found that quite easy. And if you did, let's move on to the next exercise. But if you did find it a little difficult, just pause the video here and practice it for a minute. Exercise 3. In this exercise, we're going to build on what we did in exercise 2 by returning to the index finger at the end of the pattern. So, the full pattern will be P, I, M, I. And a general rule you should start to recognise now is that you pluck downward with the thumb and upward with the fingers. So, this exercise will be plucked downward with the primary finger, upward with the index, upward with the middle finger, and then upwards again with the index finger. So, here's what that looks like. Here that is, with a two bar introduction and repeated, in case you want to try and play along with it.
And here that is again, one last time, in case you want to try and play along with it. We'll stick with this finger picking pattern for the last two exercises. However, we'll introduce chords. If you're not yet happy with the pattern, just pause the video here and practice it for a minute. Otherwise, move on to the next exercise. Exercise four. This exercise has got three chords in it. An E minor, an A major, and a D major. However, if you look through the exercise at the tablature, you'll notice you don't need to play the complete chord. You can actually use partial chords, and in the case of the E minor, you don't have to put any fingers down at all. At this stage though, if you are a beginner, or you've been learning some contemporary guitar, I'd actually recommend you trying to play the whole chord because then not only are you doing the finger picking exercises, but you'll also be improving your muscle memory. So you can get your chords more quickly and more fluently. So to summarize, in all future exercises that have chords in, you can either play partial chords or complete chords. And if there is an instance where you have to do one or the other, I will tell you. Another thing you might have noticed looking through the tablature is that the thumb or the primary finger is playing a different note for each chord. So for the E minor, you're playing an E string. For the A major, you're playing an A string. And for the D major, you're playing a D string. And these notes aren't by chance. They're the root note or the note that's giving the chord its name. And for the first part of this course, you'll be using the root note to introduce the chord for most finger picking patterns. Right, here's exercise four being played, but just showing the picking hand and the chords. Because with this exercise, we've introduced so many new elements, the chords, the different bass lines, etc. It's going to be a little longer before you can play this fluently. However, don't worry about that. Just pause the video and practice it for a while. And if you are playing this exercise using complete chords, you'd probably still be wise dropping the E minor. And that way, you can get your fingers ready for the next chord and keep the flow of the exercise going nicely. Here's that exercise being played again with a two bar introduction, but this time showing both hands. Try to play along with it if you think you're ready.
and here that is one last time at 90 beats per minute with a two bar introduction try and play along with it if you think you're ready Exercise 5. Looking over the tablature first, before we start this exercise, you'll notice we're using the same finger picking pattern as earlier, but this time we've got four chords. A C major, an A minor, a D minor and a G7. And of course the bass notes have changed again, and we're playing for the C the third fret on the A string, which is a C note. For the A minor, we're playing the open A string. For the D minor, we're playing an open D string. And finally, for the G7, we're playing the third fret on the bottom E string, which is a G. You'll also notice that there's a repeat mark at the beginning and the end of the exercise, which means we repeat the entire exercise. However, this is a turnaround, so it can go on as long as you want it to. So when you're practicing it, you can just keep looping it until you're happy with how you've got it. If repeat marks are something new to you, I've put a link down below in the description to a lesson just on the repeat marks because we use them quite a lot in music and tap, so you really need to know how they work. Here's exercise 5 being played with a two bar introduction, but showing just the picking hand and the chords. Now, here's that exercise again being played with a two bar introduction, but this time showing both hands. Here that is again one last time at 90 beats per minute with a two bar introduction just in case you want to try and play along with me. But don't worry if you're not ready, I would expect most people aren't ready. You can practice it and return to this video if you do want to try and play along with me.
fingerstyle guitar is often played quite quickly and it's quite often played open time. That means it hasn't got any metronome or drum beats with it. So your eventual goal is to try and speed it up, but you don't have to practice it with a metronome once you've got the hang of it. Here's how that might sound. And that's the end of this lesson. Now, if you're teaching yourself how to play the guitar, which I'm sure you are, you can spend as much time as you need on these lessons. They're designed to be approximately a week between the lessons, to give you time to learn the lesson and then practice the exercises at least a few times until you've got them reasonably well. Don't get too carried away though, they don't need to be perfect. Otherwise, your progression will be really slow and it'll become hard work. So just get them to the point where you feel you're ready to move on to the next lesson. If you'd like to see the tablature to practice these exercises, you can find it at www.ebooksforguitar.com and you'll need to click on the lessons, select whether you're right handed or left handed and then you'll find it in the finger picking course. I'll also put a link down below in the description telling you how you can get the PDF ebook completely free for the entire fingerstyle guitar course. And if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to support the channel, just like, subscribe and hit the bell icon. And then you'll be notified when I upload new videos and you'll be telling YouTube that you enjoyed the video, so they'll recommend my videos more. Thanks again for watching, and I hope you come back again soon.